Hello, this is David Harper at Bionic Turtle. I wanted to clarify a common confusion about the expected return of a stock price, which is ambiguous. And what I mean is that when we say what's the expected return of a stock price or the expected stock price at a future point in time, that's ambiguous. We can define that at least two different ways. To illustrate here, let me just use a few assumptions that are highlighted in yellow. Here I'll use Adobe's recent stock price, which wasn't too far from $40, with an annualized volatility of 30%. And then I'm going to plug in an aggressive assumption that the expected return on the stock per annum is 15%. So per year, we expect the stock price to grow positive 15%. And now I'd like to know what's the expected stock price in two years. Or I could say what's the expected return over the two year period. And here enters the ambiguity. The first way we can do this is probably the more intuitive way to us. And that is to use the arithmetic mean to compute the average future stock price. And that formula I say is more intuitive because it looks like this equals the stock price multiplied by the exponential function. As soon as I do that, I know that I'm using continuous compounding. This is the same as e raised to, and I'm using continuous compounding, so it's just exponential function of the expected return multiplied by the time, in this case two years, close parens. So that's my formula here, continuously compounds the $40 stock over two years at 15%. This is the maybe more intuitive way to do it. And when we do that, however, we are implicitly using the arithmetic return and we're computing the future mean or average stock price. In this case, $53.99. The reason this is confusing is because our underlying assumption is that stock price returns are normally distributed. If the returns are normally distributed, then the future stock price levels are log normally distributed. That's the confusing part. Returns are normally distributed implies price levels are log normally distributed. Over here on the right, I've turned the log normal distribution on its side, and hopefully this will make some sense. If we think about if this distribution represents the future stock price, the reason it's not normal is it doesn't go below zero. So it's stubbed or truncated on the downside. Your stock can definitely decrease from $40 to zero, but it's not going to go non-zero. On the other hand, it's not symmetrical Specifically, it's skewed positive because if we get lucky and we get some positive returns, those will compound and we have more upside than we do downside. So this log normal distribution represents our distribution of future price levels. It's not normal and here's the key thing. That means because it's not symmetrical that its median, which is somewhere right about here, and slices the distribution in half, is lower than its mean or average. Its average is always going to be higher here because there's a skew. And so that is why we can talk about the expected return and the price over multi-periods in two different ways. We can, we can be asking what's the mean return, which is going to be higher, or What's the median return, which is going to be lower? And strictly speaking, technically, I wouldn't say there's a wrong way. Probably, in many cases, you can make the argument that we want to use the median, which is the lower number, and is a function of the geometric return. So again, mean up here is arithmetic return. Median here is a function of the geometric return. So we just did the mean return. Let's look at the geometric return which gives us the median future stock price and here the idea is that the return is eroded by volatility or specifically one half the variance so if I want to calculate the geometric return I take my expected return of 15 percent and I subtract one half the variance minus I need to square the volatility to get the variance 
and then divide by 2. So there's my formula for the geometric return. It's that 15% per annum return minus one half the variance. Or in this case, 10.5%. And you can tell 15% minus one half of 30% squared or one half of 9%, which is 4.5%. What I like to say in words is that volatility erodes returns. The greater the volatility, the lower my geometric return. And my geometric return is what gives me the future median stock price on this distribution, which we now know is going to be lower than the average or mean future stock price. And so I can specifically put this formula in by saying equals the stock price multiplied by the exponential function of the expected return. But now here's the difference. Volatility erodes returns, so I'm going to subtract one half the variance and then I'm going to multiply that by the number of years in this case two and close parens and I get forty nine dollars and thirty five cents which you see is lower than the mean stock price of fifty three dollars ninety nine cents and so what we said is if it's two year period per annum expected return of fifteen percent with this volatility we expect the price to from go from forty dollars to an average of almost $54 or if we want to use the geometric return we have a we have an expected price an expected median price of $49.35 which is going to be somewhere here so that's the main difference this is David Harper of the Bionic Turtle thanks for your time